Hey there, uh, folks. Hope everyone's uh, doing okay. Kind of uh, early week. What is it? Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday night. Yeah, I was out having a little, uh, couple drinks with a few folks, and topic of music came up, and started talking about it, and uh, thought I'd keep the <laughs> keep the conversation going. We were talking a little bit about like. Um, you know, the, the usual, you know, you think of uh, from the Detroit area. So talk about like Detroit, you know, rock music. And, and there's a lot of directions you can go in. You know, you can talk about techno music and you can talk about. But this time of year, spring, summertime, you know, the windows are down. I always think of like, you know, rock and roll. And uh, and uh, those, those uh, all those garage, great garage bands that, that you know, we love so much. And uh, one band that came up, and there were a couple albums I wanted to kind of mention, like Lesser Known, I mean, these aren't really obscure or anything like that, but just like Lesser Known, um, you know, everyone knows the Stooges and and, uh, and uh, the MC5 and, and all that. And, uh, and uh, I, you know, like one band that I just don't hear get mentioned too often, at least not in the VC, is uh, The Rationals. Great. Ann Arbor based uh, Detroit rock and roll band. And uh, it's a great, this is a great record. And uh, if you're not familiar with it, if you like your, uh, you know, if you like your garage rock with a nice injection of uh, soul music, then, uh, then this is something that I think that you're really gonna dig. It's got that nice gritty guitar in it. And um, it also has like lots of great vocals that uh, certainly, you know, pay homage to that kind of blue-eyed soul, you know, uh, tradition. Um, unique, a, a unique band that was, you know, very influential on a lot of the early, now you're gonna, I'm gonna say this name here and, 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 I, and I take it with a grain of salt. Um, Bob Seeger, who, you know, we all know through those horrible Bob Seeger uh, songs and albums from the from the late 70s and the uh, in the 1980s, you know, but Bob actually had an amazing career in music, and there were a lot of like great albums that he did that were very influenced by the Rationals. He kind of mixed that um, that garage, slightly psychedelic sound with. Uh, um, his his vocal, which was which is orientated more towards kind of like a soul singer, and on albums like uh, Mongrel, which contains the fabulous single Lucifer, and if you're a garage rock fan and you don't know Lucifer, you've got some listening to do because this is a great record, and all the way through, and uh, Lucifer is a terrific single, and this is a this is a part of the Bob Seger. Uh, career you won't hear them talk about. This isn't down on Main Street. This isn't uh, Night Moves. This is real rock and roll, uh, gritty and uh, unpolished. And uh, yeah, this is a, a fa fabulous record and you won't see it too often. Some of these records have gotten a reissue, but not many of them. Um, and they're becoming pretty, pretty damn scarce. So pretty hard to find these early early Seeger songs that he were, he completely, he won't even talk about them. I actually met Punch Andrews one time, which is Bob Seeger's longtime manager, still lives not too far from where I live here. And um, I, I threw work, I had a little uh, dialogue with him one time and, uh, and then I ran into him once in a record shop and I asked him why the early Bob Seeger records had never gotten a, uh, at the time it was compact disc sort of big thing. And uh, I asked him why they never got a, a a CD reissue, and uh, he said, he just said, nobody wants to hear that crap. That's all he said, and he walked away. And so that's kind of their their opinion is that the, the, some of these did, like I think Smoke and OPs did get a reissue. It's a pretty great rock and roll record, early Seeger rock and roll. This is the album that had heavy music on it, which was one of his uh, great, you know, rock and roll or, or garage rock singles that he had. 
Um, it was a pretty fun record all the way through. Certainly not an embarrassment or anything like that. Why they're resistant to this is some of the best music that he ever made. And uh, yeah. Um, another really good one, maybe maybe Bob's best album ever, and this has never gotten a reissue, it was back in 72. Not only is the graphic great on the front, it's a great record, and uh, full of great tracks. On Back in 72 is a, you know, is a fantastic uh, track. Uh, I've been working um, Midnight Rider, which is, you know, I could do without. But this is where you find Ro uh, Rosalie, which was later turned on to uh, Finn Lizzie, ended up with that song. So, uh, yeah, really, really good album. Check this down if uh, if you like that kind of uh, that kind of rock and roll. And then the last one that I'll mention will just be uh, the Bob Seger System. And this one had 2 plus 2. And great killer track on here. 2 plus 2 on my mind. Um, kind of an anti-war song. You know, from that from that period when that was kind of the hip thing to do, and uh, yeah, just a great garage, slightly psychedelic rock album. Not too uh, too much with the psychedelics, but um, a little bit. You know, that was part of the period, and that really makes these just fun fun listens, and they hold up, I think, really well today. So besides that, um, we were talking about two more came up not too long ago and, and I think people are so another kind of like you know embarrassment later in his career but did two this is uh, the Amboy Dukes that's Ted Nugent and the Amboy Dukes so I'm uh, well aware of his uh, his uh, mouth and uh, but this is a really great um, psych garage rock album from the era uh, not only is there a great single on here, Turn You to the Center of the Mind, but uh, the, the record is just full of great, great garage rock songs. And uh, this recently got a reissue, I think, on Record Store Day, so it's gotten a little bit more, people know about it a little bit more. And yeah, that's a whole bunch of, like, if you look at the album cover, that's a whole bunch of, like, bongs <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, different kind of uh, smoking utensils on the uh, on the front there and um, and then the other the other these first two records uh, the very first uh, Amboy Duke which was uh, just the Amboy Dukes and this has Baby Please Don't Go cover but a great cover and uh, yeah if you like heavy guitar orientated garage rock um, yeah, you gotta hear that. Great cover version of it. And, uh, and then finally, I'll leave you with this. This is kind of an, um, I don't know how well known this record is. Um, this was, you know, Mitch Ryder came from the Detroit area, you know, had, had some hits with, uh, uh, um, you know, early kind of Detroit rock and roll sound from the 50s. In the 70s, he was actually part of a band and they called it Detroit, Detroit with uh featuring Mitch Ryder and they had a pretty sizable local hit with a cover of the Velvet Underground's rock and roll and uh, I think they do a great job with it and uh again it's another little gem to uh search for this is a great uh great record and uh cheap most of these are are not really expensive records at this point so worth uh worth hunting down great great graphic on the cover and uh, it's kind of the, the next step of the uh, of the Detroit rock and roll tradition. And uh, anyway, I want to keep this one brief and uh, just show some quick quick records. And uh, hope you all enjoyed that. And uh, we'll see you uh, on the next one. Thanks.